Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and we're going to continue our business series. And we're going to talk about what it takes from the infrastructure standpoint, now that you're growing your business, to keep snakes like this and all the rest of these you see here. Because it doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't happen without some planning. Right, girly? God, I love this snake. Of course, this is one of our, our ghost females. This one is a lesser ghost, and she is being bred to one of our new ghost males who got to size this year. So I'm really excited about what she might produce for me. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and just throw a male in there for you, kind of share with you our super excitement. Once I find him, there it is. Now this is a little bitty male, but he is already locking. He is eating good, so we're go ahead and using him uh, sparingly. This is a super, pa or sorry, an inchy super pastel vanilla ghost being bred to a lesser ghost. Get in there, buddy. Get it done. You know you like that big girl. Uh, make some awesome babies. But how do you get to this? How do you get to this infrastructure? How do you do it from a point where it's not going to break the bank and everything else? And I think that is a really important thing to consider. A little disinfecting there. So let's talk about it. Uh, infrastructure is several things. So one, the first thing when you talk about infrastructure, and you sit down and you say, hey, I'm going to start a ball python business. Most people do that and they start out their house. It's great. And maybe you've got a real big house and a lot of room. And you don't have a lot of kids running around or anything like that. So you got all this space and you can just do it there forever. Awesome for you. But maybe you can't. Okay, I, most people can't. So I know when I went shopping for my last house, one of the things I was looking for was doesn't have a place where I can do my reptiles. Like, do I have a, a legit spot where I can use? And you have to start thinking in terms of space because you cannot grow bigger than your space, right? So infrastructure equals your location. Uh, if all you have is a little bitty room, you can't get any bigger than that. And if you don't plan for that growth, I'll give you a great example. I have a friend in this industry who built this really uh, well-designed, <laughs> insulated, heat and air conditioned, temperature controlled, fully electrical shed in his backyard. And he designed that thing where it is from floor to ceiling uh, with racks and everything's fit in there perfect and it all fits and he has this little workspace he can work in and maneuver in to do his breeding. And it's full up, man. I mean, he gets the most bang for his buck in that space, but he planned his infrastructure and he knows that is what he has to work with. And that is such an important thing because space equals, I mean, I can't put racks if I don't have room. I can't grow beyond what I have. And if you do that, then you, you have to be planning on more. So for us, you know, we bought, well, I shouldn't say we, I bought my house uh, that I live in. I bumped my head and got a sore spot there. And <laughs> I was seeing that I was going to outgrow my reptile room. So now I was thinking, well, I have my office. I can move a bunch of stuff into my office. I can do this. I can do that. And I was trying to find these places to squeeze things and make it work. And it was going to be okay. Uh, and then the chance came up to buy this house. And for us, having our own reptile house gave us the infrastructure we need. You may not need that much space. That may not be what you're after. And you may need more. I mean, for shit's sake, Kevin has a warehouse looking thing, right? Barcheck has racks that look like they go for miles. It depends on the size you want to be on the amount of infrastructure you need, but you'll never get that location unless you plan for it. So space is a premium. Where are you going to do it at? Have a plan. Planning your rack acquisition. So we talked in the last video about saving that money back, right? And making sure that the snake's money is the snake's money. This is one of the reasons why. Because as you grow, and that if you're going to need to add more racks. So you can plan for those large purchases so it's not going to be debilitating. You can plan for it. You can make it happen. You need to be ahead of the game. If you've got 20 females that you've held back and that you're growing up, you need to get their tubs before they're of size. Because a lot of rack companies, almost every one of them is going to be out 8 to 10 weeks at a minimum. They're busy, folks. They don't have them just sitting there. There are a few companies that do. Uh, depends on what style you're looking for. So plan for that. Plan for that bill. That bill, well, I, I, it blows my mind when people go, oh, man, I got to buy a new rack, and I just don't know how I'm going to do that. You knew. Dude, you bought the snakes that are going to have to go in it. You bred the babies that are going to have to go in it. You knew that was coming. So to not be prepared for that infrastructure, man, that's on you. And we've all been there, so don't think I'm ripping you. But what I'm saying is, if you know it's going to be coming, 
this is a bill you should be planning for to grow your infrastructure. Because the worst thing to do is have these animals and no spot for them, no space for them. Be scrambling, find yourself out of money or in crushing debt or putting yourself in a situation you don't want to be because you didn't plan your infrastructure. I can harp on infrastructure for a day. I encourage you to tell me to shut up before this is done. Speaking of that, plan for your food. Food is one of the biggest killers to people starting out because they see these snakes, they buy these snakes, they don't think about, oh, well, it's a baby eating pinky rats. Well, now you bought these 10 babies. Now they're 10 adults and they're eating these rats and they're going to cost you more money. And then you have babies you're trying to sell and they're eating rats too. And that, I mean, it can become a crushing thing. So you need to have a plan when it comes to how you're going to feed your snakes. And I went through some math and yeah, some of them like, oh, your numbers are off. I don't really care. They may be a little bit, but this is just some numbers that are pretty close that we pulled together to say, to give you kind of an idea of some averages. There are three ways to feed your snakes and only three. These guys ain't going to eat carrots. They're going to eat rodents. So one, you're going to have to go down to your local reptile shop, like what we have at Manhattan Reptile World, and buy your rats from a shop. That shop is gladly going to sell you those rats, and it is going to charge you retail rat prices. It's a brick-and-mortar store. You can't blame it. It's a great situation for a person that has one snake, maybe two snakes. They don't want a freezer full of shit. They just want to go buy their rat, go home, feed it. Or buy their one frozen thawed rat, go home, thaw it out, feed it. That's all they want to do once a week. No big deal. So we're charging those people $4 a rat. Okay, but let's say you got your business started and you're averaging a collection of about 100 snakes. You're like, well, man, I ain't gonna have 100 snakes. My ass, you won't have 100 snakes. If you're planning on breeding, okay, and you're gonna have six to seven babies of female and you have a collection of 30 snakes and you have 20 clutches, start doing the math. 20 clutches on an average of six is 120 babies. 120 babies. So now you have 150 snakes. See how quick that blew up? So we're going to say 100 snakes because uh, you probably won't get 20 out of 20 every year. All right, You're going to have some that don't. So we're going to say 100 snakes. Um, and on 30 snakes, you know, most people's ratio ain't right. Hell, we did 22 clutches and I think we had, well, we had way more than 30 snakes. <laughs> but we only had about that many breeding females. I think we only had like four that missed on us. So uh, when it comes to your food, if you go to that shop and you have 100 snakes, we're going to say that 75 of them eat. Okay, 75 of your snakes are going to eat on any given week. You're going to have some skip for various reasons. So you're going to have a $300 a week rat bill at $4 a rat buying 75 rats. That's so what you're going to have. That is figuring an average price of $4 per rat. Just to give you some, some totals, that equals $15,600 a year. $15,600. Okay, that's $1,300 a month. $1,300 a month is more than my mortgage. I would literally be paying an extra mortgage plus just in a rat bill every month. That's hard to do, guys. Uh, so I don't recommend going to the shop. And this is coming from a guy that owns a retail shop. If you go to a retail shop to feed your 75 uh, rats off a week, you're, you're a sucker. Don't do it. There's a better way. I'm going to tell you a better way because you're going to plan your infrastructure. Maybe you work with a company like Rodent Pro, Perfect Prey. There's a ton out there. We used to buy from Rodent Pro all the time. I had good luck. Some people hate them, but some people hate me. Uh, so we're going to say that if you go through Rodent Pro, you're going to spend an average of about $1.50 a meal. And you're going to look and say, well, I can find their prices cheaper than now. But you've got to ship them, bastards. And shipping them is not cheap. You're using dry ice, things like that. It's expensive to ship. So we're going to say an average of $1.50 a meal. You're also going to throw away some rats from time to time. So you're going to have a lot of waste because you can only re-thaw them or refreeze them once. And it's just $1.50 a meal on average. So that gets your weekly bill cut down a lot, right? Because you went from 4 bucks a rat to $1.50 a rat. Now you're only paying $112 a week. It's not as bad. It's going to cost you a total of $5,850 a year. Hey, that's not so bad. It's still a lot of money, though. Uh, it comes out to an average of $487 a month. $487 a month is more than I pay for both of my vet payments. That's right. I have two Corvettes I'm paying on. They're old, okay? I'll be honest. They cost me less than that a month. One's for me, and one is so my wife doesn't want to drive mine. But that costs me less money than, than those rats would cost you going to Rodent Pro every month buying 75 rats a week. 
Do you see what I'm getting at here? Let's talk about the best way. And for those of you who are on our Patreon page, right, we're going to tell you a way to do it for absolutely fucking free. I'm going to get that $1,300 number down to zero in your infrastructure. I'm going to put $15,600 back in your pocket if you're willing to do the work. Okay, well, I'm not going to tell you how. Kurt's actually going to tell you how to do that. And to put that in your pocket, back into your business every single year. Or if you're doing the Rodent Pro, $5,850. And that's still a significant chunk of change. I mean, it really is. If you give me five grand a day, I have a lot of shit I'm going to get done. But we're going to talk about breeding your own rats right now. And that ain't free. Okay, it's not free to breed your own rats. There's ways to uh, mitigate that. That'll be covered in Patreon. But we're going to say it costs about 65 cents to produce your own rat. That's incorporating food. We're feeding Missouri. you got to feed your rats good food. If you want a good, healthy rat to feed your snake, feed it good food. Don't be giving it dog food. Don't be giving it shit that ain't good for it. Okay, give it good food. Missouri is a great food brand. It's, it's healthy for them. That's going to be providing them with clean litter watering systems, things of that nature. It's going to be providing them all the needs that they have that you need to provide for them. Because again, a healthy rat makes a good food item. I want to eat a steak from a healthy cow. Don't be giving me that diseased ass cow, right? Same thing kind of applies here. So at 65 cents a rat, uh, you're going to run about $48.75 a week. Now we're getting into manageable. Now we're talking about missing a date night once a week, a meal out with your spouse. Uh, that's going to cost you $2,535 a year, much more manageable, or $211 and a quarter a month. Now, $211 and a quarter a month, I think that is something that you can manage. And it's also easier when you're putting your money back like we talked about, and the snake's money stays the snake's money. It's easier to get your bills covered there, right? It's much easier to spend $211 a month than it is $1,300 or $487. So I, I really believe that is the way to go is breed your own if you have a place to do it. But again, you got to have a location and you're going to have to put in some work. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over and Kurt's going to kind of take you through a quick tour of how he does rats where we, where we do them at. You won't need that much space. <laughs> well, maybe you do, but we kind of supply most of North east or north yeah northeast kansas so unless you're supplying an entire area you won't need that many rats <laughs> but he'll show you how we breed them how we produce them you know what a healthy rat looks like and I'll give you some of the tips and tricks on that and then kurt's going to run the patreon video this week and he will tell you how to take that 65 cents and that 211 dollars and if you're going to do all that work you might as well put that money back in your pocket too. He's going to explain to you how we did that for what, about two years, Kurt? Yeah. We didn't pay for a single rat and we did it on the up and up. He's going to tell you how to do that. And also, even makes for better customers when you do that. Anything you want to add before we switch over to your part, Kurt? No. Nope. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Because actually, believe it or not, this guy is going on vacation. So I might even film a little bit while I'm on vacation. So look for that. But I'm going to turn it over to Kurt right now so he can do some rat work. So, like Matt explained, basically the cost of, you know, buying your rats at a pet shop or going and ordering rats online at the frozen or breeding your own. And like we do, we breed our own, but we breed them for an entire, like, pet shop. And so what you would need is you need some type of a rack. And these are ARS racks. And they are really, really nice, but most people can't afford or can't you know have something like this freedom breeder makes some really good uh like metal rat racks too um if you guys can go with something like this these are really nice they're sturdy they last for a long time when you buy them they come with all the tubs they come with the watering system i ended up adding two buckets to them because they would go about you know two or three days and they'd be out of water now they can go almost a week about double that about six days before we have to water them um but you can also have like wooden racks. You can make your own racks. I've done that. There are a lot of videos. I think in the future, Matt talked about, you know, me doing a video about how to make like a, your own uh, rat rack. Um, you can use different types of tubs. These ones are really nice uh, because they don't have any angles or anything that the rats can chew on. So you don't have them like chewing out and, and escaping. Um, you. You do need some type of a watering system. When I first started breeding rats, I had water bottles like this. 
And the thing about it is they don't hold very much water in them. So you're constantly filling them up all the time. Um, you can actually get them that are like bigger, like you know, three times bigger than this, but it's still, you're, you're constantly filling them up. Um, these work really, really nice because I just take a water hose with a ladder and I go and fill them up and they last, you know, like I said, six days. And then, you know, they all have these little nipples here where they just push on it and then the water comes out. Um, you want to have black hosing. You don't want to have uh, clear because this will kind of grow algae and stuff inside there. So the black is the way to go. It keeps the, the lines clean. Um, the next thing is, y you know, once you get the cost of these out of the way, you know, you're going to have to find somewhere to get rats. Um, we luckily had a pretty good stock of rats, and I think we ended up ordering, like, some from Kansas City. drove to Kansas City that another guy bred and bought, you know, a bunch of rats to kind of help our um, breeding operation. But you're going to need a, uh, a way to clean them. And what we use is we use, this is a pine bedding that we just get at the uh, local co-op here in town. And it's about $10 a bag. And... I normally go, it's normally about, say, for a rack like this, one bag will uh, be able to clean it. Um, is is kind of like, you know, a little bit more, a little bit less. And then we also get our, um, we get, uh, it's Missouri rat food. It comes in pellets like this that we use. And those are about $28 a bag. Um, it's best if you try to find, like, a local place to pick them up. If you have to ship them. These are 50 pound bags and it's going to cost a lot to try to ship them. Uh, we basically, if, if this operation, we have nine of these rat racks and then we have three mice racks and then I have a rack over there where I breed some like African soft furs. Um, here I figured there's, if you add them all up, there's maybe, if you add the adults and like the babies that could be in the cage, there's probably about 5,000 rats here. Um, and what we do is we go through... Um, anywhere from 400 to $500 in food and bedding a week. And that's quite a bit, but we're producing about, at, at full capacity in this place, I can produce 1,200 rats a week. Um, we don't do that right now because I was producing way too many. So I basically um, had, tried to keep about four rats in here. And what I've done is I've brought it down to where most of these now have three rats. So we're not, there's not as many um, to keep producing. Um, once you, uh, so once you get the equipment and everything out and the cost of how much it's going to be for your food, the next thing that you have to think about is your cost of time. Um, before, when I was coming here, I was basically doing this all by myself and I was spending, you know, 20, 30 hours a week in here cleaning all these, taking care of them. Um, you know, once they get up to a certain size, you have to take them out, put them in a different rack, and it's just a lot of time consuming. Well, we actually hired another guy to come in and help, and he takes, you know, a little more, probably more than half the workload um, off of me. Um, and we figured with one person cleaning this rack, it takes about an hour and a half to clean one of these. Uh, with help, we can knock that down in half, so it takes about 45 minutes uh, to clean one of these. Um, but you know, it's, it, and if you have to pay someone to come in and clean it, then you have to include that in your cost. But if you just have extra spare time, you can come in and clean them, then, you know, you're kind of saving that money too. Um, but if you guys have any questions, you guys can just leave a comment. Um, this is just kind of a basic overview, I guess. There are other places you could, if you don't, if you're not skilled enough to build a rack, um, uh, TGR actually has rat racks that you can buy from them and they're like a single stack and they're more affordable. These I think are a little over $2,000 per one of these. Um, and if you just have one of these, these will feed you know quite a few snakes just having one of these big racks. Um, but if you guys have any questions, just you know put it in the comment. Uh, do you have a question? And my uh, wife, Jen, is uh, filming right now. Hi guys, I do have a question. So you said that your bedding is pine, correct? Yeah. Is there any bedding you need to avoid when it comes to rats? Um, I just try to go with the least expensive. You, you know, I do mix in a little bit of uh, cedar shavings, but and what that does, it helps keep the 
um, insects down. Like if you have a whole bunch of rats and you don't think about how to treat them, you're going to get fleas and mites and stuff on them. Um, we actually have a spray that we get at the co-op that is for like animals and help to keep fleas and stuff down. So we spray the bedding down and then we also mix about anywhere from a quarter of it up to a third of it with uh, cedar shavings. Uh, but you don't want to do the whole thing in cedar because that gets toxic. It would be too toxic for them. Um, so added into the cost of you've got a rat rack, yeah. then you've got to buy rats, then you've got to buy bedding and food, yeah. and then you need to get some spray to help reduce the mites as well, which yeah, and then, is a small percentage. Yeah, and also too, like when you're producing, you know, rats are going to live two years, you know, maybe a little bit longer. Two years is kind of the average. Um, males are going to live longer than females. So when you are producing, you're going to have to say, oh, well, I need to hold some back just to replace the breeders that pass away. That's something to kind of think about, too. If you're thinking like, oh, well, I'm going to produce, you know, 100 rats a week, and that's what I need to feed my snakes, well, then you need to maybe produce like 105 or 110 a week just to kind of replace the ones, you know, that are going to eventually uh, pass away. Or you're going to get to where your, your rat production just kind of dwindles over time if you're not replacing um, the, the breeders that pass away. Um, any other questions? Why are you wearing jeans? I don't know. I like jeans. Usually it's khaki cargo pants. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thank you guys, and we'll see you next week.